There we go. Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast, Matt's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. we got a good show today with some of the top three-year-olds in the country. Yeah, it's a big weekend. Matt. We got that. We got the Haskell, uh, of course, at Monmouth Park, the one million dollar grade one Haskell at, with uh, several top three year olds in there. Uh, we also have the Coaching Club American Oaks with uh, a, a pretty good three year old Philly facing some grade one winners at Saratoga, both on the uh, same afternoon, Saturday at Saratoga is Coaching Club American Oaks. It raises the question, Matt, who is the best three year old out there? And I'll pose that question to you right now. Who do you think is the best three-year-old out there? Well, Brian, uh, um, I mean, I guess maybe if there's a big performance uh, in the Haskell, I could possibly change my mind. But right now, I, I think I got to go with the Philly Thorpedo Anna. Oh, wow. Okay. I, I, I didn't know that you were going to say that. And, and she's kind of the one I think is the best three-year-old Philly in the country. Well... You, you've known I've liked her uh, for, for months now, my Kentucky Oaks pick. Uh, she's my top three-year-old of either gender. So I'm agreeing with you, Matt, that the Baffert horses are missing again. Uh, Nysos, uh, we haven't seen with any workouts in a long time. The good news is both Muth and Parenting are expected some point soon. Parenting, uh, we thought we might see Parenting in the Haskell, but came up too soon for them. Uh, Muth, the same. Uh, we also have horses waiting for the Jim Dandy, Sierra Leone, uh, Seize the Gray, the Preakness winner, of course. Uh, we might see some of these Haskell horses. Let's take a look at the field in the Haskell. We might see some of these Haskell horses uh, in the Jim Dandy as well, because certainly Fierceness, there's a good chance that he will be scratched out of this Haskell, Matt, and run in the Jim Dandy. And then Danny Gargan threw a little wrench into the works. When he said, oh, I don't like the post position of Doorknock, he could scratch and also run in the Jim Dandy. Yeah, I think so. Uh, uh, to be quite frank, Brian, I, I think that fierceness is the one that is most likely uh, uh, um, to, to run in the Jim Dandy. I mean, all along, including when I talked to Todd Pletcher on, on Monday, uh, at Saratoga after the, his horses had their last workouts, um, uh, the the three horses running. I'm in. I'm, I'm entering three horses, but uh, I feel like uh, Rapoli ultimately is not going to want fierceness running against Mindframe. Uh, 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 fierceness already has a great one win. Mindframe doesn't. Fierceness seems to be. Uh, uh, in my eyes, headed to the Jim Dandy. Uh, Johnny V is named on uh, fierceness in the Haskell, but Johnny V uh, uh, is named on, I think, uh, nine horses on Saturday at Saratoga. Yeah, yeah. It certainly looks like fierceness is going to end up scratching out of the Haskell mm -hmm. and, and run in the uh, Jim Dandy one week later at Saratoga. I, I agree with you there. Um, I, I don't necessarily like from what I've been seeing from Fletcher, you're a little closer to it out there talking to him on Monday, but from what I've seen, uh, from Fletcher, it, it, you know, we're, we're, we're waiting to get an official answer. And, and he, the last thing I heard was, well, I'll leave it up to Mike, but I also heard that, uh, unless Mindframe has to miss the Haskell for whatever reason in the next couple of days, fierceness will be scratched. But in explaining it, Pletcher talked about the grade ones, and you mentioned that, so I, I have a feeling he mentioned it to you. And, and I, I just don't like that part of the business. Uh, Pletcher's really talk when he's talking about grade ones and, and not grade ones, he's really talking about stallion value. And, and that bothers me a little bit that these horses, these best horses, these best three-year-olds in the country are... Uh, uh, being used as chess pieces to find where they can get a grade one just so that they're uh, stallion value. The, the Haskell is a huge race. I'd like to see the best horses in it. And maybe Mindframe is the best horse. Let's look at that field again here now that I'm getting off my soapbox. The other thing that bothers me is, is Danny Gargan right, right away saying after the post position draw, well, we might scratch. I don't like the one hole. Um, 
I think he'll run. I guess you do too, it sounds like. Doorknock is a threat from the one hole. When Doorknock is out there on the pace, Matt, Doorknock has been very good in his career. Remember in the Derby, he got crunched out of the one hole. Different situation horses. This is yes. going to be probably seven horses. Doorknock wants to show speed. He's on the rail in a seven-horse race. I, I, it, it seems like a pretty good post position to me. I completely agree, Brian. I don't know. I think Gargan was maybe having a little flashback to the – the derby but i i have a feeling that the his ownership group uh, may not agree with the statement that he made about uh, the jim dandy and let's face it brian if fierceness does go to the jim dandy as we think uh his main speed competition is out of the race yeah yeah it, it would seem to be a good spot for for door knock in here with fierceness going to the jim dandy on the rail, Louis Saez. And like I said, when Dornick has been involved early in races, he's been very good. He showed it in the Remsen. To some extent, he showed it in the Fountain of Youth, and he certainly showed it last time in winning the Belmont. This is a Belmont re rematch where, of course, Dornock uh, repelled. Repelled might not be the right word, but he held off mind frame in the Belmont Stakes at Saratoga going 10 for long. Dor Dornock, a very good horse with the expected scratch of fierceness. He's a solid second choice in this field. I, I don't know why he would run other than uh, the trainer being upset about what happened in the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, I agree with you, Brian. Door knock of a good horse and certainly a threat is the son of good match stakes winner. Jasper's pride is not a stakes winner, Matt. He's, he's a Jersey bred sprinter who's never been in a stakes race. And uh, he's breaking next to Doorknock, we think. Uh, Jasper's pride has never been farther than than, than six furlongs. Uh, he's coming out of some decent form at Monmouth Park. But it, it, it seems like a tough spot for the Jersey bred. Oh, for sure, Brian. Uh, he's a Jersey bred. He's never run in anything but a Jersey bred race. All of them at Monmouth Park. Um, for you and I, Brian, I, I've called us Jersey Breads before because we are. Uh, nothing wrong with that, but when you're going into the grade one Haskell, you're in trouble. Yeah. In the sprints, he's not showing a lot of speed, but they are six furlong sprints. So there's the there's the threat that he could be a, a pace presence early, but we really don't know. And as far as where he is at the finish... I don't think either of us expect him to be around too much after they turn for home. Tuscan Sky is uh, the other Pletcher, the third Pletcher, the Pletcher we're not talking about. Maybe we should be. The son of Vino Rosso has won three out of four lifetime. Comes off a very nice win over the track. Yeah. Well, we certainly should not be ignoring uh, Tuscan Sky. Uh, uh, started out his career very smartly with two victories at two different racetracks. At Aqueduct and then at uh, and then at Fairgrounds, tried the Wood Memorial. Things didn't go his way. Finished seventh, but certainly bounced back with a nice victory in the Pegasus. Uh, it was the was the Pegasus of the quality of some of the uh, races that Dornock or or Mindframe or others have run in? Probably not, but he's the other Pletcher in here and should not be ignored. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. And, and domestic, don't forget, Domestic Product was the horse who ran a pretty well-beaten second in that Pegasus. And he came right back to run a good uh, winning race in, in the Dwyer after that. So Tuscan Sky with a nice race over the track, lightly raced. I think he's another horse you have to think about uh, quite seriously in here, the other Pletcher. Number four, Timberlake. Uh, Matt, Timberlake was a horse... Um, in fact, I think I think Timberlake is a horse that you've liked more than me in the past, but for good reason. This is a horse who's won some big races, including last year's Grade One Champagne in New York, and uh, uh, the seven fi seven figure uh, Rebel Stakes at uh, Oakland Park early this year. He's back after a layoff. Yeah, he he was one. Of, I think at one point was one of Brad Cox's best uh, Kentucky Derby. Prospects, uh, you know, Cox has had so many of them throughout the year, and they came and they went, and and that happened with, uh, with that with Timberlake. Um, that was a really nice win in the Champagne, and then in the Rebel, went to the Arkansas Derby, finished fourth, but didn't come out of it the way Cox would have liked to, 
and now he has been off for nearly four months. Can he get back to the form he was in? Uh, can he uh, uh, be competitive in the Haskell uh, off of that layoff against very good three-year-olds? Um, again, I, I can't ignore him. Yeah, I, I think he's a very good three-year-old. His last four races, he won the Champagne nicely, fourth in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, won the Rebel nicely after a layoff of nearly four months. That that sounds familiar. Uh, then he was fourth in the Arkansas Derby. In the Arkansas Derby, he kind of rushed rushed out to get the lead uh, after not breaking on the lead, and and he tired. Muth beat him, and and others, including Mystic Dan, beat him in there. But um, it wasn't his best performance, and uh, we've seen that a few times with Timberlake. So you got to wonder about him in the biggest of races. But the, the the Champagne win, the Rebel win, are good enough to think about him as a serious contender against. You know, let's face it, three year olds that have been beating each other. Timberlake, uh, fresh, coming off the same layoff he did to win the Rebel. He's a consideration here. Fierceness, if he's in the race, he's speed, he's very dangerous. Johnny Velasquez, who has all those mounts at Saratoga, another reason we don't think he's going to run here. But uh, the two year old champ, Florida Derby winner, if he's in the race, he's a big threat. Yeah, that's for sure. And I'm not one that's so quick to dismiss this horse as uh, as lots of other people have been. Uh, Pletcher did say that he has been training the way he trains when he runs well. So again, we'll see uh, what fierceness does the next time he's on the track for a race. Right. We don't expect him in the Haskell, just to be clear, but just in case he does run in the Haskell, they do it. 180 is he's in the Haskell. I think he's probably got more early speed than Doorknock. And races like the Breeders' Cup and Juvenile, Breeders' Cup Juvenile and Florida Derby have taught us he is very dangerous when he's at his best. The Haskell would seem to be a good spot for him if they decided to run. Number six is just step on it, Matt. A son of Accelerate. I, I like that name, Accelerate, just step on it. Uh, but um, this horse has won three of nine. He's had one stakes before. It was a listed stakes. He he, he didn't do great in that one. Uh, he's coming a, a, a score at Parks in an allowance field. Um, again, another one that's hard to pick out here. Yeah, that's for sure. A $25,000 supplemental entry, Brian, into the Haskell. Uh, uh, put that piece of information on there. Interesting. This is a New York bread, a New York bread that was claimed at Del Mar for $32,000. I think it was a good claim. Somebody going out there and saying, hey, here's a nice New York bread. I'm going to bring them back east, which they did. And, and, and there's plenty of good races for the horse. Um, it's one an allowance, this and that. Hasn't run in a New York bread race yet, but uh, this is a super tough spot. I don't know why they're trying the Haskell. You got all those the New York bread stakes with uh, pretty nice purses out there. I'm sure he'll end up there soon. Yeah, yeah, I, I, right. I, they, they brought him east, and he's not running against New York bread, so ho hopefully that. As far as the Haskell, no thank you with uh, just step on it. Uh, the next horse is going to be the favorite, Matt. And I actually think that uh, um, Mind Frame is going to be a pretty heavy favorite. I, I don't think you're going to get anywhere near nine to five on Mind Frame. Mind Frame has looked sensational. Uh, he, he won in his debut at Gulfstream Park. He won easy in his second race at Churchill Downs. And his race in the Belmont, you know, stretching out after such little experience till mile and a quarter at Saratoga this year, uh, ran a big race and, and maybe only some shenanigans down the stretch got him beat from winning the Belmont and coming in here undefeated. Uh, I think people are going to jump on that and I think he's going to be a big favorite in here, but who knows how good mind frame is. If you ask me right now who has the best chance to be the three-year-old champion at the end of the year, it, it could be mind frame with all of that potential. Yeah, I, I uh, can't argue with that, Brian. I, I will be honest. Uh, at at one point in the stretch of the Belmont Stakes, I thought Mind Frame was the winner, and that point was when he briefly got to the lead. But you know, inexperience, greenness, you know, going a tough mile in a corner, 
with only two races under his belt, caught up with him and certainly dug in as we know. But yeah, uh, mind frame looks like the horse that has a lot of upside potential still. Yeah, absolutely he does, and 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 absolutely people are going to see that. Now, I'm glad you mentioned Doorknock being tough because Doorknock is tough. Doorknock doesn't let horses by him easily. And that's what happened in the Belmont to some extent. The other part of of course is a, a left hand whip mind frame quickly wandered way wide and 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 was not running a straight course there in the last uh, 16th of a mile and got beat less than a length. So mind frame, if he moves forward off that Belmont, uh, a deserving probably heavy favorite in the Haskell. Number eight is C-Streak. If you're looking for one long shot to run a big race in the Haskell, Matt, uh, C-Streak far and away for me is, is, is the bomb that could. Uh, this wizard also a jersey for Eddie Owens Jr. The gelding has run some nice races. He's run some nice races over the track. Two races ago, he was an impressive winner of the Long Branch. Yes, he was. Uh, in, in his other start against top three-year-olds in the Pegasus and then earlier in the spring in the Holy Bull, he, he wasn't particularly uh, uh, competitive, but he, but he does have some interesting races that he ran. Going back to his debut, he actually, Brian, debuted in a stakes race finished second in it, and he finished second behind the now grade one winner, Bookham Dano, who is an impressive, impressively fast sprinter, who I think is scheduled to run on Friday at Monmouth Park. All right, there you go, Bookham Dano. Yeah, now, C-Streaks C races at Monmouth Park are very good. At least you see the last one, the Pegasus. But he was just, I hate, I hate what happened to him that day because he was hung out way wide going into the first turn with with four horses inside him and and it really gave him no shot horses that do that early don't win and, and c streak you know faded to fifth in, in the pegasus i'm going to draw a line through that that's what you got to do if you want to you know bet a horse who's 20 30 to one so i think c streak is a playable long shot actually in the haskell all right let's take a look at the time form us pace projector for this big million dollar race we haven't looked at it yet and yeah, there's some question marks again. Is door knock running? Is running. Uh, what the pace projector is saying is a fast pace with fierceness slightly in the lead, but they're saying Tuscan Sky, uh, another Pletcher, and Mind Frame, uh, another Pletcher. So all three Pletchers are out there. Erase fierceness from it, and suddenly you've got Tuscan Sky and Mind Frame maybe battling for the early lead, according to Time Form US. I would look for Doorknock to have more speed than this is suggesting. And uh, uh, Timberlake, I guess he's not far out of it, so that's where I see Timberlake early. But uh, you could see the four favorites as the four early leaders heading into the first turn. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't really agree with this. I think that uh, uh, if Fierceness is not in the Haskell, that uh, Doorknock will have a clear path uh, to the lead, yeah, you, you know, the the pace projector time form uh, algorithm, I think, takes into consideration all of the races. And, you know, you see those huge victories uh, by mind frame uh, where he was, you, you know, running away. It, it, it says to the pace projector that uh, he, he's going to be forwardly placed. I, I, that's why I think it's showing up like this. Yeah, and for Tuscan Sky too, I would expect Bornock to be ahead of Tuscan. Both Tuscan Sky and have enough speed without fierceness to to get the race, but that's only if Dorn doesn't really go from the rail, and I, I think he would really go from the rail. But it should be a contested pace, even without fierceness. It, it shouldn't be too easy for Dornock, but. As we've said before, Doorknock is a, is a horse who can do well with uh, with pressure, and uh, we'll we'll see in the Haskell. All right, so that's the uh, that that's the Haskell. We'll have to see what happens and, and and how it relates to the Jim Dandy in a few weeks, because again, we could see fierceness, possibly Doorknock joining horses like Sierra Leone and sees the gray in that Jim Dandy in the in the big three-year-old picture, and as we're leading up to the Travers in late August. 
As far as the female race the same day, Matt, uh, th there's no question. I, I said mind frame is going to be a heavy favorite. Torpedo Anna is going to be a heavier favorite. For, for certain, she's going to be odds on in this field. And, and that's, you know, you look at a five-horse field with the best real filly in the country, and you say, well, yeah, she's going to be a huge favorite. But there are good horses in here. Two of the other horses in the race, both trained by Todd Pletcher, are grade one winners. Uh, another horse in the race is the only one to beat her in a grade two. Uh, and even the longest shot on the uh, the field is a horse I think you can talk about a little bit. So let's start from the rail out. Uh, Candy is an interesting horse, Matt, because the daughter of Candy Ride has a really good record. Um, grade one winner in her second lifetime start last year. Very close and maybe a little unlucky in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies last year when she was beaten less than a length. Uh, she's only had two races this year. Uh, people forgot about her after she ran fourth in the Ashland. But that was after a long layoff in a pretty tough field. She came back with a nice win at Monmouth last time. Candide, you know, if, if you ask me who's the second best three-year-old filly in the country, it certainly could be Candide. Yeah, one of them, with a, you know, uh, as you described, uh, one of the other grade one uh, fillies in this field. Uh, in a way, I was sort of surprised, Brian, that that the the coaching club got a field this large to contest uh, Thorpedo Anna, and got a field of this quality with Candy and 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 Leslie's Rose and Intricate. They certainly could have waited and found other uh, other graded three year old races um, uh, at at Saratoga or at other tracks. So. I was impressed with the quality of this field. Yeah, yeah. Todd Pletcher and, and his owners are taking a shot in here, and you don't blame them. You can't blame them. It's a short field. Uh, running second in the coaching club with American Oaks would not be a bad result. Um, but uh, it, it, it's tough. It's tough facing Torpedo Anna. So we're happy to see some good fillies in there. Talking about Candied and all the good things I said about her, if we look early at this time form U.S. Pace Projector, Matt, uh, it doesn't set up as well for Candy okay. because you see that there's not much speed in here. And it says Torpedo Anna, clear leader, the number three. Uh, the horse she beat easily last time, grade one winner Leslie's Rose, is clearly in second early. And then you go back to everybody else and you see Candy at the back of a five-horse field. I think Candy is a very interesting horse making her third start of the year. I don't like how this pace sets up for her, and unless her stable mate, unless Leslie's Rose really takes the race to Torpedo Anna early. Yeah, you look at the past performances, and, and we know how good Torpedo Anna is. We know how impressive her three starts uh, have been, and, and the way she's dispatched those fields so easily. And then you look at the pace projector, and you think, oh, geez. She's not even going to get any pressure, and and is going to be able to get out front and, and and relax and and set whatever kind of fraction she wants. Yeah, well, here's the thing. I I, I would think and I would hope that Leslie's Rose um, shows a little bit more speed than probably that U.S. Pace Projector is showing. I, I think that's her only chance to win the race. I, I think she can't sit well off a slow early pace by Torpedo Anna and really have much hope of ever running down, down Torpedo Anna. So I think the grade one Ashland winner would, uh, it would behoove her and her connections to, to, to really show some speed under Johnny Velasquez. Uh, there, there, there's Johnny Velasquez again, Matt, uh, listed to ride fierceness in the Haskell, uh, named on Leslie's Rose more, more hints that we won't see fierceness in the Haskell. But anyway, I, I think Leslie Rose has to show some speed. But that might not be a bad thing for Torpedo Anna because she's happy to sit on the lead or she's happy to sit second as she chases Leslie's Rose. Uh, anyway, that's the pace projection and the reasons why Candied might not be quite as interesting as I laid out. Number two is Barbatrina. Uh, Bar Barbatrina is, is a uh, daughter of Catholic boy. Uh, Brad Cox trained her uh, throughout her career, but now she comes here uh, for George Weaver. And uh, this is a horse who's finished first or second in five out of six. Um, 
two starts back, she had a bad start in the Gazelle, and she did not run very well in the Gazelle. Given a little bit of time, she came back with a nice win last time, a nice allowance win at Churchill Downs. Is the George Weaver Philly a possible long shot who runs big in the CCA Oaks, Matt? I think a possible long shot for sure. Uh, George George Weaver has a reputation over the years of, of having very good Saratoga meetings and having his horses ready to run. So uh, could George Weaver move this horse up a little bit? Uh, yeah. And, and if, you know, Leslie's Rose, you know, knocks heads with Thorpita Anna a little bit early, you know, it's five worth field. Could she get into the trifecta? Yeah, why not? Yeah. Yeah, I guess, I guess it's an interesting filly, but she's found a very difficult spot with the other four horses. Number three, of course, is the big favorite, Thorpito Anna, trained by Kenny McPeak to be ridden again as she's been ridden in all of her races by Brian Hernandez Jr., uh, I can't say enough about her, Matt. She, her, her fantasy was just dominant, the grade two fantasy in her first race as a three-year-old. The, the Kentucky Oaks on a wet track, she had to uh, work with fast fractions early, and she was dominant again in the grade one Kentucky Oaks. Last time, the acorn was as easy can be over the same distance, the same track as the Coach Club American Oaks. We both said, uh, Torpedo Anna, we like is the best three-year-old of either gender. Uh, I think she's been working great. I loved her last work in company at the track. It, it, all things point to Torpedo Anna. Yeah, that's for sure, Brian. Uh, won, the, won her last uh, three races in impressive fashion. Four lengths, four lengths, five lengths ahead of the others. Uh, um, she is absolutely the horse to beat. Yeah, she's doing it easily as she's winning by... Uh, combined 13 lengths in all those big races before and she's she'll now look for her her fourth big win in a row here on saturday and matt and i do expect her to get it number four is leslie's rose matt leslie's rose as we said a few times todd pletcher a daughter of into mischief a grade one winner uh four starts back she failed uh, as the favorite in the devona dale went third she won the ashland nicely over good field at Keeneland. Then in the Kentucky Oaks, she was one of the horses who took some money. She wasn't that far behind Torpedo Anna in the odds in the Kentucky Oaks. While Torpedo Anna won easily, Leslie's Rose ran 13th. She came back in the acorn. She bounced back to be second in the grade one acorn, but she was a well, well beaten second in that acorn. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, but the second, not too far behind Torpedo Anna, makes her... Uh, uh, a horse you got to think about uh, uh, as, uh, you know, a possible exact horse uh, or certainly in the top three. She's the only horse in the race who has enough early speed to to be out there with Torpedo Anna early, coming off that second in the acorn. I don't know how close she was to her in the acorn, but uh, she was good enough to be second in that grade one race with a good field. Number five, the only horse to ever beat Torpedo Anna is Intricate. Intricate was a very good two-year-old for trainer Brendan Walsh. That win came in the grade two goldenrod last fall at Churchill Downs. Uh, unfortunately, since then, three starts this year just have not looked as good for the daughter of Gunrunner. Yeah, hasn't been able to find the winner's circle uh this year was second uh, in the Retro Alexandra, agreed to it fairgrounds, uh, but then was fifth in the fairgrounds Oaks and most recently uh, was again second. This was at Churchill Downs in a listed stakes uh, honoring the great Monomoy girl. Yeah, yeah, she rallied to a good horse. How pretty woman, the winner of that Monomoy girl is a very nice three-year-old as well. Um, Intricate has run some good races this year. The second rallying to be second in the Rachel Alexander and the Monomoy girl are good races, uh, but they're not great. And, and the Fairground Oaks was a disappointment. If you could draw a line through the Fairground Oaks, you'd like her more in here. Um, but uh, it seems like a filly who's just going to rally up for a piece, whether that be for maybe third or fourth or fifth in here. J J uh, based on her three-year-old form. It's time for top picks, Matt Schiffman. Uh, who you got? We're going to start with where you'll be on Saturday, the Haskell at Monmouth Park. 
I will be at the Haskell on Monmouth Park. So I'll see all of you uh, heading there to get your annual Haskell hat. Uh, um, you know, Brian, uh, I know, I know he's going to be the favorite, but I am a huge fan of Mind Frame. You, you pointed out earlier that he could possibly turn into one of the contenders for this division championship, and I agree. I'm not getting up the, the price I might want, but I'm picking Mind Frame. Yeah, I, I think fierceness would be the other horse bet in the Haskell. And, and what I mean by that is he would be the horse that could make people think about jumping on the mind frame bandwagon. With fierceness out, yeah, I, I have a feeling mind frame is going to be under even money. You picked him in the Belmont. I, I can't blame you for picking him again here. He is the horse to beat. He has looked great in his first three starts. I do warn, though, that the Belmont Stakes was a lot mile and a quarter that early in his career that it, it, not that long after he debuted and, and, and jumping up in distance in class it, horses sometimes will bounce out of that with a less than best effort the next time out um there are some other good horses in here i'm going to try to beat them at what i think will be the low odds and and and, and having said that again i i still think my frame still be timberlake at eight to one on the morning line i don't think he'll be quite that high but he'll be the fourth choice um, has run enough good races, and, and he got beat last time in the Arkansas Derby, but he's been freshened. Brad Cox has horses ready uh, off the layoff, and I think Timberlake is a very talented horse who, for value's sake, will be my top play in the Haskell. Coaching Club American Oaks, we're not going to surprise anyone with these top picks, Matt. No, we certainly won't. Uh, uh, Thorpedo, Anna, for me, the uh, the Summer Olympics are coming up, and Thorpedo Anna, of course, honors the the great Olympic champion uh, uh, swimmer from uh, years ago, uh, 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 Thorp, and from Australia, Thorpedo Anna. Yeah, Thorpedo Anna for me. I I, I really do think that she's an outstanding three year old filly, one of the best three year old fillies we've seen in the last decade. Uh, that's saying a lot because there have been some good three offs, but I, I'm I remain high on her. I love the way she's working. I, I kind of think we're going to see something, maybe uh, along the lines of her best career performance on Saturday. I I can't pick anybody but Torpedo Anna as well in the coaching club American Oaks. All right, Matt, let me get a parting shot for you, my friend. Hey, Brian. Uh, like I said, uh, going into the show, we got some we got some great racing. Great cards, uh, Brian. Uh, uh, great cards at uh, uh, Monmouth Park. Uh, the undercard at uh, on Haskell Day is loaded, loaded with uh, um, uh, great stakes races. I think Idiomatic, the great older uh, female, is going to be running at Monmouth Park. Same can be said about uh, Saratoga with uh, the CCA Oaks as the uh, feature, but uh, a few other really nice races. Yeah, I'd almost like to see Idiomatic, who's running in early in the card in the Molly Pitcher at Monmouth, and Torpedo Anna, who's running at Saratoga in the Country Club American Oaks. I, I'd almost like to see that race, but maybe we will soon enough. Um, Idiomatic in the Molly Pitcher, Highland Falls in the Monmouth Cup, a wide open, interesting edition of the UN. Uh, you're going to get some good odds in the UN on just about anybody there. So, yeah, great card at Monmouth Park. As always, I want to thank you all for watching the show. Matt and I sure do appreciate it. Turn on those notifications, subscribe to our channel, give us a thumbs up, uh, leave a comment. We we always like to read the comments, most of the comments. Some some of them, uh, you know, we, we, we could do without, but we'll take we'll take the criticism criticism as well. I want to thank our uh, friend in the home office, Candace Curtis, for the race, race graphics she provides us all the time. Derby Wars, the best contest site out there is their sponsor. And of course, Time for US for the pace projections we use here on Horse Center. Next week, of course, we'll be talking about the Jim Dandy. We'll see who's in the Jim Dandy after we get the scratches from the Haskell. Until then, good luck. We'll see you soon right here on Horse Center.